It's race review time for the 2019 Mexican Grand Prix. What did we think of that? Did, did we enjoy that? I'm, to be totally honest, I, I'm not too sure. I was a little bit bummed out at the end of yesterday and I could have recorded this video straight after the Grand Prix. I had just about enough time, but I thought, you know what, Dan? Just sleep on it. Let your thoughts ponder a little bit because I, I wasn't happy after yesterday's Grand Prix, but... I usually know I'm I'm wrong with most of these kind of things. Usually I say it was a rubbish race. I turn around, everyone says it's brilliant. My mind hasn't changed that much. Spoilers as always, a nice and long episode for you today. A little bit more chilled out, chilled out vibe. Here is your result on the screen. But don't worry, lots to talk about, lots to get through. And perhaps the fact there is a lot to talk about suggests it wasn't as bad as I'm making out. But rants inbound, lots of rants today. Right. Lewis Hamilton, your race winner for the second time in his career, didn't wrap up the championship this weekend, but has to get at least one seventh place finish over the rest of the season to seal the championship. I think he's got it in the bag. You'd be a crazy person to not bet on Hamilton winning this championship. Sebastian Vettel, another P2, slowly getting a bit of consistency in this second half of the season. Valtteri Bottas, after his crashing quality, up in P3. So actually, Mercedes... Coming into this weekend, not expecting a race victory, <laughs> come away with a double podium. Charles Leclerc, pole position man in the end, ended up the race P4. Strategy did not go his way. Then came the two Red Bulls, Albon and Verstappen. Perez on home soil, a P7, a brilliant race from the Mexican driver. P8 was the honey badger himself, tried to get his claws out but couldn't quite catch Perez in the closing stages. Pierre Gasly inherits P9 and Nico Hülkenberg inherits P10 after the torpedo himself decided to do a little bit of late on torpedoing at the end of the Grand Prix. On the final corner of the Grand Prix, we'll talk about that penalty for sure a little bit later on. The torpedo himself, P11, Danny Kvyat. Behind him, Lance Stroll, who actually, on the quiet, I think had quite a strong Grand Prix. McLaren, oh, they will be disappointed with this weekend. An unlucky P13 for Carlos Sainz. Lando Norris didn't finish the Grand Prix. Lots to talk about with them. Lots to talk about in general, actually, today. Antonio Giovinazzi, P14. Then came the absolute bin bag of a car, the Haas F1 car, P15 for Kevin Magnussen, P17 for Romain Grosjean, in between those two, George Russell in P16, actually a strong race for him in the Williams, and our final race finisher, Robert Kubica, who to be fair to him, and we will talk about Williams in a moment, I actually think had a strong race, one of his better races since his return in Formula 1. Our two non-finishers, Kimi Raikkonen and Lando Norris, both opting to retire, which is something you don't often see in Formula 1 these days. Before we do our full race review, I'm actually going to change up how we do the race review today. Have a little bit of fun, have a little bit of a play. The penalty for Max Verstappen, I didn't have chance to mention it in my qualifying review because I would like some sleep occasionally, so I did my review while I was asleep, penalty was added. I think this is fair, um, to be totally honest with you, Max himself shot himself in the foot. The silly Billy decided to say in his interviews that, yeah, I, I saw the yellow flags and I ignored them. You can't say that and get away with it. Otherwise, if he hadn't said that, I think he would have got away with it. So I, I just wanted to say my piece there. Didn't bother me too much, and I don't think it bothered Red Bull too much either, considering that the slipstream, in theory, should help you out on the straight. Today, as I just mentioned, doing things a little bit different, trying something out. I'll be doing this over the rest of the season. I've done it for most of the season already, but changing up how we do things. Sometimes I start with the front, sometimes I start with the back. I'm going to go through it in team order this time, starting with Williams. They came into this race saying that realistically, looking at the rest of the races this year, this is going to be their best one. And on race pace, I think that was fair enough. It wasn't as bad as it's been for some races in 2019. Spent most of the Grand Prix fighting with Kevin Magnussen and Romain Grosjean. And considering where the Haas was at the beginning of the year, especially in Melbourne, 5th and 6th, I believe it was, on the grid. or sixth, Yeah, it was 5th and 6th. Grosjean 5th, I think. And Magnussen 6th. Considering how far away Williams were, they'll take that. Robert Kubica, of the two, was the one really getting his elbows out. Had a brilliant fight with George Russell at the end of Sector 1. Nudged him off the circuit a little bit, but was really going for it. 
and of the two was the lead Williams car had to do an extra stop late on due to a slow puncture so the result doesn't look as good but Williams actually I think will be content with today's result I shouldn't say happy because you know there's still no points but content for sure and looking forward to next year likewise with Haas oh, <laughs> painful stuff to witness today Crofty said on commentary the, the virtual safety car on the first lap was down to Roman Grosjean. I didn't see this. I've watched the replays. I've seen some of the onboards. I don't quite know why there was a virtual safety car on the first lap. Whether it was some of just the debris coming off the Hamilton Verstappen kerfuffle, I'm not too sure. I don't know what Crofty's on about here. But all race, Haas down with the Williams car. And Jonty's corner himself said about the summer break that he thought the Haas car was getting to the stage where it's as bad as the Williams. And I thought he was joking. I really did. I didn't see it coming. And yeah, I think at this stage of the season, Haas are going to have to expect to be at the back. I mean, kudos to the two drivers for staying as upbeat and chipper as they have done. But to be comfortably behind Alpha, comfortably in the mix with Williams, they'll be gutted with that performance today. Talking about Alfa Romeo, a quiet day for them. I think they were ahead of the Haas car. But behind the midfield, I think Haas, Williams and Alpha, all of them, would not surprise me if just scrapped this year, moving on to next year, and I can't blame them. Kimi Raikkonen, a quiet race, got a little bit racy halfway through on a different strategy, ended up retiring. No official reason why yet. I don't receive press releases from Alpha, but I do from some of the teams. However, Giovinazzi... Well, he was driving an OK Grand Prix, but the pit stops, a real issue today for multiple teams, the pit stops... His wheel fell off. <laughs> I've never seen anything quite like it. Wheel gun wasn't working. The other team that had a calamity in the pit stops were McLaren. Blimey, looking at this image on screen, what could have been today? And I think, I might as well say it now, my biggest issue with today's Grand Prix was it really highlighted many fundamental issues in Formula One. At the front, we had the fact that it didn't really matter what strategy you were on overtaking was nigh on impossible despite one of the fattest straights in Formula 1 despite Ferrari having comfortably better straight line speed maybe if Leclerc hadn't made his mistake it would have been okay but McLaren starting in the top 10 7th and 8th you're thinking brilliant but as we've seen for the last couple of years starting 7th and 8th is all well and good but you have awful tyre strategy that's what screwed over Carlos Sainz he had to do a two-stop in a Grand Prix where, although that stupid AWS was saying it was a guaranteed two-stop, I don't think it was. Getting the B in AWS, I wasn't a fan of that either. Um, this is a real rant today. Uh, but Carlos Sainz, that was how his race unfolded. But Lando Norris, oh, just like Giovinazzi, pit stop went all wrong, decided to retire. And man, can he just catch a break? That would be lovely. Miles behind Sainz in the points now, but <laughs> some of the incidents he's had this year, you really have to feel for the man. The Torpedo. We'll move on to Toro Rosso because I could bang on about McLaren for a long time. Another team, just like McLaren, that kind of got screwed over starting in the top 10. I mean, when you look at the pace of the Toro Rosso cars and the McLarens in qualifying compared to the likes of the Renaults and Racing Points, it's criminal. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like the idea in theory that you can mix up strategy starting outside the top 10. I mean, that's not really a topic for today, but Toro Rosso got really hurt by this. They were on for some okay points with Danny Kvyat in P9. Well, P10 it would have been. They've actually, after Kvyat's torpedo on Hulkenberg, uh, although Hulkenberg's lost out on a point, the team overall have gained because Gasly's moved from outside the points into ninth. So, an okay Grand Prix from Toro. So you can see Gasly in the background there. Suffering with a bit of an illness, Nicky Tummy, we were talking about yesterday. Actually, to score points, a bit of a valiant effort, I would say. Renault, we've said this many times this year, really showed up with some race pace. Hulkenberg, doing what Hulkenberg does best, having a quiet race, doing a little bit different on strategy. Not like Ricardo, his teammate, going a little bit crazy with strategy. But that really worked for him. But Hulkenberg, quiet race, getting moves done getting smacked about by the torpedo on the final corner. And you've got to feel for him. He's trying to wrestle and save his Formula 1 career. And that happens to him. But he still comes home with a point. 
but I really did feel for Nico today. That could have been two points, and when you see how close that midfield is, yeah, <laughs> you really do have to feel for him. Ricardo, on the other side of the garage, started on the hards, went 50 laps into the Grand Prix. That was insane. Brilliant job from Danny Rick, nursing those tyres. Had one chance to get past Perez at the end. Squeezed on the brakes. Well, I say squeezed on the brakes. was a bit of a, a Danny dive bomb, as we used to say back in his Red Bull days. Didn't make it work. Perez held on to P7 to the delight of the Mexican fans. But when he went for that move, my God, that, that power slide he did when he was trying to get back on the circuit. Big bonus. Did enjoy that one, but a little bit scary. You know, he just was not stopping that car. But I think Renault will take that after a difficult weekend with the media. To finish just behind one of the racing points, they'll be happy with. Lance Stroll, as I mentioned, out in Q1, but in the Grand Prix, he starts... He's still one of the best race starters in Formula 1. Say what you will about qualifying. He makes up the difference straight away on lap 1. His overall race pace was okay. He was up to about P13, I believe it was, at the end of the first 10 or so laps. Didn't really gain from that afterwards. But his teammate Sergio Perez, hats off to him. Mexican hats off to him. What a Grand Prix. Sergio's really coming alive in this second half of the season. Has that bit of oomph, that, that chilli in his belly. He's going to make overtakes. He's going to be he's scoring points. I mean, he's up into ninth in the standings. Before the summer break, he'd only scored three times in the season. He's smashing it at the moment. And we see some drivers crumble under the pressure of their home crowd. But Perez really took that on board today. Didn't make plenty of overtakes, but made enough. And fended off Ricardo beautifully in those final few laps. And in a car... That looking at qualifying, looking at practice as much as we can, didn't look like it would be on for any points, or if it was, maybe the lower half of the points. So to come away best of the rest, cracking job from Sergio today. Really impressed with that gutsy drive, and I'm really impressed with Racing Point once again as well. Red Bull. Ah, man. Could it have been a victory today? I mean, we'll never know. They didn't start on pole position. They had a car quick enough for pole position. Taken away from Max, we said at the beginning of the video. And in the first couple of laps, a scrappy one for Max Verstappen. And you know what? Looking at the first half of the year, if you'd have said that, you'd have said, yeah, he probably can get away with that. But since the summer break, he's had a couple of times now where the first lap has just not gone his way. Driving with a bit of anger. I think after qualifying, he said he wanted to be, he was going to be first into the first corner. He wasn't. And actually, Ferrari did a good job holding off all of the cars behind them, especially Charles Leclerc into turn one. I was impressed with that. But Verstappen went for an optimistic move on the inside of Hamilton. A bit of contact, both of them trying to hold on to the position. Verstappen over the grass. They were both fine. Both lost positions. Verstappen way into the midfield. Hamilton likewise. Both of them okay, but Verstappen went for an over-optimistic move on Bottas through the stadium section. He got the move done, but a tiny bit of contact. I think Bottas was caught unawares. Verstappen, puncher. A good, solid recovery drive, but yeah, it, the damage was done early on. And actually, Albon, once again, outscoring Max Verstappen. Early on, racing in the top three, and I think most of us were hoping he could hold on for a podium. The race pace wasn't quite there with Alex Albon, still has to learn that, but still in his rookie year, you know, trying to chase down Leclerc, had a bit of an issue with his pit stop as well, not with the pit stop itself, but when he came out, came out in traffic behind Carlos Sainz, I believe it was, took him a little bit of time to get past, which did hurt his race in the end, and also was on the two-stop strategy, which the man in front, Charles Leclerc, was also on, and that just wasn't the way to go. It really wasn't. And I will moan and moan and moan about these AWS graphics. I am not a fan. I understand for some people. And I always try to be as helpful as I can to people that are just starting out in Formula 1. As in watching it. Because it is difficult to understand. So I imagine for them it, it's quite useful. But it takes the fun out of it a little bit for me. And they were saying, and predictions were, two stop. But as we saw, the likes of Vettel, Hamilton, Bottas... The one stop ended up being very easy in the sense that nursing the tyres was a must, but there wasn't that, that cliff that we see with some of the tyres. And what I mean by that is the tyres didn't suddenly just, the degradation didn't suddenly just bang 
and they lost all performance. They seem to be quite consistent, but I think the top three that were all on the one stop did a very good job on nursing the tyres, especially Lewis Hamilton. He was not happy. I mean, we've seen this many times in Formula One, Lewis Hamilton not happy with this strategy, but even I thought it was a bit of a gamble. Ferrari kept Vettel out a little bit longer, didn't really have the pace. Bottas did a, did a classic Valtteri Bottas, actually, just followed the, the strategy in place for him, drove a strong Grand Prix, but a quiet one. And Charles Leclerc, who was leading for a good chunk of the Grand Prix, likewise with Vettel, it just didn't fall into Ferrari's hands today. And their hands got tied a little bit by the Alex Albon situation. Albon came in, Ferrari took the gamble to cover off Albon, but what that did was force Leclerc into a two-stop, which very quickly was unfolding. That was not the way to go. Leclerc himself couldn't catch Valtteri Bottas at the end, made a bit of a mistake at the end of Sector 1, hurt his tyres a little bit. But even then, we've seen many times in Formula 1, and I think this is why I was a little bit disappointed at the end of the race. We have this build-up, this tension that it's going to be an epic final fight, but it just doesn't happen because the cars, by the time we get to that stage, the tyres have just worn so, so much, they're just nursing them, they're not really pushing flat out. Again, I could talk about this all day, and I want to save that for a different video, a different kind of project I'm working on. But today, it, it did bum me out a little bit. However, I've got to mention it. Fair play to Lewis Hamilton. We'll talk about him in a moment. But fair play to that Grand Prix he did. But my God, what a saviour to that race was. The podium ceremony. Fair play. I absolutely love that. That was brilliant. Seeing Hamilton. I mean, when we saw rumours that the car was going to be lifted up, I thought, OK. But seeing Hamilton come up, standing on the car, I love that. That was awesome. I don't want it every Grand Prix, but that was cracking. Please, more of that F1. Just a bit more fun. Just stop making boring trophies. That would be brilliant. Moving on to driver of the day. The official poll gave it to Max Verstappen. And I think Verstappen drove a good race, a strong race actually, in the second half. A really good recovery drive. However, there were a few moments I wasn't too impressed with Verstappen. Don't get me wrong, he's definitely fourth or fifth in this list, probably fourth or even fighting for third on my driver of the day. But scrappy first few laps, made a mistake with Bottas, I feel, because even if he did get the move done, Bottas, it would be easy, just like it was, easy for him to breeze past back on the straight. Also, that kerfuffle with Magnussen was a bit unnecessary, so I think he was driving with a bit of rage today. Max Verstappen, good race from him, don't get me wrong, but driver of the day, of course I was going with Sergio Perez, mega impressed with him, not only today, but in this second half of the season. I want to give a bit of praise to Lewis Hamilton as well, something I feel that I, I don't do often enough, and I understand that I'm drawing battle lines today, not putting Verstappen in the top three, but I'm putting Hamilton, but I, I will say, although... I think he was a little bit over dramatic on the fact he wasn't happy with this strategy. And by now, you would think he would trust in Mercedes. The way he nursed those tyres, I, I was impressed with. And Daniel Ricciardo, he's always seemingly in my top three for driver of the day. But making those tyres last for 50 laps and then being racy at the end, very impressed with. Team of the day, I've gone with Mercedes for first and third. Pretty self-explanatory, but also the fact they didn't really look like they were going to be on the podium at all. So to get two cars there, fair play. Overtake of the day, yeah, I've done it. I've gone with Kubica and Russell. Really racy between the two of them. Right on the edge, but just enough respect as teammates. I was also struggling to think of more overtakes. Sainz made a good one on Verstappen. My God, Orange Army, please. I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to keep <laughs> oh, I'm digging myself a hole. Yes, Sainz on Verstappen was very good. A couple of dive bombs into turn one. Kvyat and Perez. Perez made a good move, but I was impressed with Kubica today, actually. So I'll give him that. Surprise of the day, I just didn't expect Haas to be as pants as they were. Not impressed, but maybe that's me. I've got to understand now that they're moving on to next year. Anyway, this has been very chilled out today. However... That doesn't change my opinion on the race. Yeah, I've gone with a five. And, I mean, this video already <laughs> feels to me anyway a little bit different than normal. Not sure if I'm going to do it this order again. Feels a little bit rushed, but I'm looking at the time and I'm thinking, blimey, we're, we're almost at 20 minutes. It was an okay Grand Prix. We had a title fight on the line, but that never really came into play at all. 
We had a fight with the top three, or the top four even, that potentially was brewing but never quite got there. And I've said this many times over 2019, if we just saw some more of that midfield, Verstappen coming through, Perez making overtakes, Sainz even just going backwards, maybe I'd have given it a little bit higher, but comparing it to some of the Grand Prix this year, and also comparing it to some of the scores I gave races earlier on in the year, I'm giving it a five, which may be a bit harsh, maybe I should go with a six, but I think for Russia, I gave a six, and I, I definitely enjoyed Russia more than Mexico. Moving on to the Drivers' Championship, and then I will leave you alone, then I will leave you in peace. Actually, I've got a bit of an announcement at the end, kind of. Anyway, <laughs> Drivers' Championship, Lewis Hamilton hasn't won it just yet, but as I mentioned, needs a seventh place in the remaining three races, so it's pretty much there. Sebastian Vettel overtakes Max Verstappen, that's a point of interest, and is now only six points behind Charles Leclerc, so Vettel having a strong end to 2019. Pierre Gasly moves back into P6 after outscoring Carlos Sainz this weekend, but Alex Albon is right on their heels. I think Albon will end up with sixth now, but that's very close indeed. Perez moves up to ninth, but the fight between ninth all the way down to 14th Kimi Raikkonen is uber, uber close, but Behind Lando Norris, not a single one of those drivers scored a point. So Hamilton, it's looking good for the midfield. It's all to play for. And a similar kind of story is true in the Constructors' Championship. Mercedes, well, as we already know, as of last time out, they've won the whole thing. So for them, it's pretty straightforward. Ferrari, they've guaranteed second. Likewise with Red Bull in third. But behind them, McLaren holding on to fourth. No points this weekend for the first time in a long time. But after Renault's disqualification in Japan, that's pretty nailed on. But the gap between Renault, Toro Rosso and Racing Point, just nine points, that is very juicy indeed. And I think that's one over the remaining few races we usually see at the end of the season. The Constructors' Championship is pretty much done and dusted. But Renault, that disqualification could really hurt them. And if things keep going the way of Racing Point, the way of Toro Rosso, potentially Renault could finish down in seventh. What a shocking year that would be. But as we all know, Alfa Romeo no points, Haas no points, and Williams still stuck on a big, fat, juicy one point. That is your lot from today's race review. I don't know, I felt a little bit off today. Maybe that's because we're doing this the day after. I'm not too sure. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I feel like I've angered a few of you, especially the Orange Army today. But my quick kind of announcement, it's not really a big announcement, and I've said it a few times, a lot of you keep asking me at the end of these race reviews for me to do them longer and longer and longer, or to do a podcast. So I'm going to try and do a podcast. I've been working on one now, no word of a lie, for about a year and that take, that's, that's far too long to be working on it. But I want to do something a little bit different to what most people are doing. I mean, WTF1 podcast, I know Sean the F1 Word did a podcast and sometimes does it when there's not a race weekend. The F1 Debate Show is pretty much a podcast, late breaking as well. So I don't want to just do rinse and repeat every single time. So I'm trying to do something a little bit different. I've done a few practice recordings with a few different people. And I think I'm almost there. And I'm hoping to release it over the winter break to get it ready for the 2020 season. And it's, it's also difficult because other people are bringing out podcasts and I don't want to try and copy them as well. So I need to be a little bit more, a little bit more fearsome, I think, and, and stop trying to avoid everyone. But also I want to give you all something that's a little bit different. Anyway, I'll keep you posted on that. I, I definitely will. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Apologies to today's video. This, this might just be me, feels a little bit different, but thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, if you're new and you've made it this far, yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed, and feel free to subscribe, right, I'll leave it there, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.